the real world. Welcome to my channel. This is Serge bringing you another action figure collector's review on the Marvel Legends Superior Octopus. He comes from the Demo Goblin Build a Figure Wave. As you can tell, you get the figure itself right there, and behind him, you get his tentacle accessories, and you also get some Demo Goblin Build a Figure arms. Right here, you get the Superior Octopus on that side. The same image reflected over here on the back of the box. You get a nice little product shot, a bio up there at the top. Other figures from this wave and the Demo Goblin build a figure. Up here at the top of the box, you get the Spider Man symbol. Down there at the bottom of the box, nothing but the barcode. Let's get to it and open this bad boy up. Here's part three of our Demo Goblin build a figure series game of Hangman. Right here, we'll pop this arm right on in this slot right here. Make sure it's in there nice and good. And then we'll go ahead and put this other arm in just like so. Make sure you put a lot of pressure out there. And there we go. Halfway there. And we'll take a good look at these accessories. First of all, we'll take a look at the tendrils. Right there. They're not as thick as the ones we got with Doc Ock. And I will like to seem like these have bendy wire in there. Or like at least be poseable. Like maybe joints somewhere throughout. But it's not that bad. I mean, it's got a little nitpick of mine where I wanted mine to be poseable. But I would have liked to have seen a wash throughout. Maybe some battle damage would have been great. But, I mean, these ain't as thick as the ones we've seen with the Doc Ock figure. So, you know, that's not too bad. And right here, the skull fork goes over like that. But it doesn't get, go over down on the bottom part. Or you could rotate it around just like that. I like the green that we're seeing. And I like the claws. Now, I would have liked to have seen these be able to be closed or something. But that's not too bothersome right here you can take this put this part off and port it back in just like so and right here in the backpack piece like i got a little bit of marveling on mine but it's not that bad i like the vents that we're seeing the sculpt work looks nice i enjoy that and the line work right there looks good and this is where you port them in these little tendrils and you can just take one and pour it in right here. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. As you can tell, I can put it on the top or the bottom. Just whatever you prefer. And that's where it ports into the back of the figure. We'll take a look at the shorter ones just so you can see the sculpts. You know, how it's, you know, shorter or whatever. But yeah, that's how it naturally poses, which that's very bothersome. But, you know. You're limited with your poseability with the arms, which that's a big major downfall with these figures as far as, you know, this one is. But yeah, looks good. I don't know how I feel exactly about it. I mean, I like it, but I would have preferred to see the bendy wire and like a little bit of battle damage and some wash, but they're all more or less the same. And here's the Superior Octopus out of the box and grabbing your attention onto your screen. Now, this figure does have some redeeming qualities and we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a good look at his articulation. First of all, his head can look up this far, which is a nice amount. And he can look down that far, which is a great range. He can do the Exorcist. He's got a little bit of that confused dog going on. He can throw the perfect pitch. He's got butterfly joints right here. which Mine are very stiff. And they don't really want to go. But I've seen them work before. But he's got a bicep swivel. He's got a double jointed elbow. I have to heat that joint up. He's got a swivel. And he also has a hinge at the wrist. Right there. He's got a new diaphragm. And a lot of people like it, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. But he can lean that far to that side. He can lean that far to that side. He can crunch forward. It only feels like a tiny bit. And he can crunch back that far. He also has a waist swivel. And it does have a little bit of turn where you can turn the that diaphragm. But don't have a lot of range in there. But I think I like the Power Rangers Lightning Collection a little bit better as far as their... But uh, his legs can split out that far. 
It's got a thigh swivel, double jointed knee that bends in that far, and it can bend back that far. And he can't really kick back too much, it's just a little bit. He has a boot rotation, his ankle can move down that far, up that far, and he does have the ankle rocker. Go ahead and take a look at the sculpt and the deco, which I like it. It looks very good. Now it's a combination of a couple of my favorite colors, like the green, the black, and the uh, like the matte gray. I really do enjoy that. It really catches the eye very well. But mine right here, I don't know if you can tell, it's got it came out of the box that way, like a scratch mark right there, and that's very disappointing. And right here. My paint apps didn't really come out too clean on my figure now where it does like and it don't really line up right there But where it's painted and it's painted well at it looks very clean like right here at the, the little circles and the little tendrils coming down across his chest Those are painted very well on my figure and I like the mus muscle definition on them. I think that looks good I like his little gauntlets or wristbands whatever you want to call them they feel they rotate around which you know they're floaty so if you take the hands off which i would have loved to see interchangeable hands with this figure but if you would take that off you can probably take those off as well i haven't took these hands off yet, yet. i said yet twice <laughs> but uh right here you get the gray right there and it's a different kind of gray it's more like a metal gray you know more and it doesn't really match the same color as the tendrils either it's like a darker color his hands, I like I like the gesture on this hand. I, I just like it. I, I think it's great for posability. Right here you get the fisted hand on this side. And it's more of the same, you know. It's good sculpt work and stuff. But you get that same color right there in the green. Looks good. And this piece is still, I mean, you can rotate it around. Which, you know, I, I assume those pieces go to the outside. But the rest of the bottom of the half of the figure looks good it's glossy black i enjoy that you get this stripe going around back here i got a little bit of extra plastic right here on the back as you can tell but i like the matte gray around the boots i think that looks nice it really makes the figure pop you get pig holes at the bottom of the feet i mean it just the black and the gray tones that they use on this figure really make the muscle definition pop now, this line work right here is very fuzzy, and there goes a lamp of mine. Let's see how many reviews I can do and knock that lamp over if you want to. But, right here, you get fuzzy line work right there, which is very bothersome. And these tendrils right here, I would really love to see them. I mean, I know you can switch and swap them around, which, you know... My biggest complaint is, is like, if I want these all facing one direction, you have to, like, kind of move them and finesse them around. And, you know, I just want to be able to pose them. That's my, one of my biggest complaints about this figure. But that was a good look at his articulation and his sculpt. how the Superior Octopus scales with a couple of Marvel Legends that I've already reviewed. You have the Vulture on the right, and you have Shang-Chi on the left. On these scales with a couple of Power Rangers from the Lightning Collection, you have the Dragon Shield, Black Power Ranger on the left, and my modified Red Ranger on the right. Now our Octopus scales with a couple of Neck and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You have Bebop and Rocksteady, Bebop being on the left, and Rocksteady being on the right. Here's how he scales with a couple of Masters from the WWE Universe. You have John Cena on the left and Triple H on the right. And if you want to see me review these two figures, let me know in the comments below. Scales with the new McFarlane toy line. You have DC Multiverse's Harley Quinn Classics on the left and Batman from the Animated Series on the right. I've already did a review on both of those. If you want to go check it out, go do so. My final thoughts on this figure. He looks good on a shelf. I'm not going to deny that without his tentacles, but without the posability, we're limited to what we got. And the tendril that he has in his hand right now is the most aggravating one to put up with. I cannot get that thing posed in the same direction to save my life for nothing. It's very aggravating trying to get this thing into some poses. 
And, you know, that diaphragm, you know, I feel like it's kind of limited. I know people love it, but in my personal opinion, it's very limited because I would rather have the ab crunch and the diaphragm like we see with the Power Rangers Lightning Collection line. To me, that's a better joint. But let me know what you think of the figure. Let me know what you think of the review in the comments below. And as always, feel the urge to collect with Surge. If you want more action figure collectors reviews, then feel the urge to subscribe to Surge. And if you liked what you've seen, then click that thumbs up button. And if you want to see this channel grow, then don't forget to share with a friend. Speaking of friends, you can friend me over there on Facebook. Links to that will be in the description below. You can follow me along on Twitter. Links to that will be in the description below. Yeah. Superior octopus, more like inferior octopus.